Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Amy from Pen Venture. Welcome to another Fountain Pen review. In this one, we're going to check out one of my first Pelican fountain pens, the M1000 White Ray. Around five weeks ago, I was letting everyone know how excited I was to receive this fountain pen in the trade. So I just got my first Pelican M1000 and it's the White Array Edition and I was super, super happy. Now I'm ready after a few weeks of using this fountain pen, leaving with it to share my findings with you on the Pen YouTube channel. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. This will help me a lot. And also it will show this content to a lot of you that love fountain pens. Also, if you want to support the Penventure YouTube channel and uh, my uh, content, don't forget to subscribe and let's proceed with the fountain pen review. In true Penventure style, like you're used to by now, I'm going to show you some details regarding the fountain pen company, uh, the pen model, side-by-side -side size comparison, writing sample, and in the end, I'm going to share some of my personal opinions regarding this fountain pen. Usually I don't do this, but I have some notes right here and I want to, to have some history behind the Pelican Pen Company. So the company was established in 1832 by the chemist Carl Hornemann in Hanover, Germany. The company produced initially paints and inks and in 1871 the plant manager Gunther Wagner took over the business and for the first time we've seen the iconic Pelican logo with the pelican bird and uh, three chicks back then because he had three family members. Over time that number grew to four chicks and one pelican if I am correct and uh, right now we only have one pelican chick on the logo and that's for artistic reasons. The first pens produced by the pelican pen company started to show up sometime after 1920 Nine, when the company purchased different patents and uh, started to produce fountain pens. I am super happy to have one of the flagship models to share with you today, the Pelican M1000. Now let's proceed with the customer experience, what you get once you order such a fountain pen. Although I'm not sure if they are still available right now to order, but you can find them. So this is the kind of box that you will receive the fountain pen in. Lift the lid, inside you will have this beautiful Lafayette M1000 Rodden White Ray by Hokusai. Information regarding the limited edition of the Pelican Souverain M1000 a white ray certificate of authenticity with the number and a beautiful beautiful paulonia wood box with the chop right here on the lid you're gonna find a pelican m1000 resting like a boss because yes this is the flagship fountain pen the m1000 series of Pelican. The M1000 is a iconic, iconic fountain pen oversized from Pelican. It has that beautiful, beautiful nib. It has the piston, uh, ink window, all the bells and whistles. You can find it in a lot of configurations. The White Ray edition is quite a special one because it's made in collaboration with Japanese uh, artists and uh, the craft of Urushi lacquerware and it displays the use of mineral uh, materials like abalone shell and uh, mother of pearl in order to embellish this fountain pen and to make it look so so damn pretty. Yes, that's the point of making uh, such a fountain pen pretty is to have expressions like this from guys like me. Let me show you a few uh, of the things that characterize the M1000 series fountain pens. Like I told you, the M1000 is an oversized fountain pen displaying a lot of interesting things, uh, combinations of materials, colors, and the white ray edition comes after quite a few of them, which are starting to show up around 2011. And I have all of the details noted right here. I'm gonna try to introduce a few pictures just for reference so you guys can understand the beginnings of this M1000 collections that are using materials 
like abalone shell, rodden, urushi techniques and all of that. So in 2011 we had the moonlight edition, 2013 we had the sunlight, 2014 starlight, 2016 sunrise, 2020 green ray and in 2021 we have this beautiful white ray which is using mother of pearl. Let me show you the details of this impressive pen. On top of the finial we have the iconic pelican logo with one pelican and the chick and this is laser engraved. The finial it's very beautiful it's just like in layers so we have this dome shape first layer then we have another layer right here a beveling edge and then we have the ring of the clip and this is so so pretty and German people have something regarding tacky style and uh, it, it looks gorgeous in my opinion it's very very delightful to see these hidden gems of details all over the fountain pen and I'm going to show you all of them. Then we move further and we have the clip and the clip it's the iconic pelican beak uh, shape with this two eyes right here and the beak continuing in you can clip the fountain pen even by very thick coats and it will keep your fountain pen quite secure. Moving further, we are greeted by this beautiful mother of pearl inlays uh, which are set on a black contrasting uh, background on the cap and the cap is straight coming down. We have no drastic drastic tapering in or flaring out and this large mother of pearl are so beautiful they capture the light with this pinkish hue and this cream and it looks gorgeous in my opinion. From the brochure that I had in the box I've read that uh, this mother of pearl are set on uh, the fountain pen body which is pre-prepped uh, using urushi lacquerware by the Japanese artists and I believe this is stunning. I think it adds some weight and also a little bit of uh, let's just say different feel than what you get with a plain resin M1000 Souverain fountain pen and uh, this is this is beautiful and we have two gold plated trim elements uh, one smaller ring one larger ring and actually this larger one it's the rim of the cap and we have right here on this larger ring engraved Germany and if we turn the pen like this you will find Pelican Souverain and right here opposite to the clip we have the limited edition number which is painted and this is 209 after 400. So 400 fountain pens this is quite a limited limited edition after all if you know Pelican and we have one complete turn of the cap to uncap the pen. This is very useful if you are in an office environment and you remove the cap to write with the fountain pen take notes then put the cap back one turn of the cap it's more than enough and it is very practical to uncap the fountain pen. We take a first glimpse at the nib. This is the stunning iconic interesting ultra uber nice 18 karat gold nib from the Pelican M1000 series. This is beautifully beautifully embellished with this elements two-tone the Pelican logo at the base 18c 18 carat 750 and the nib size medium in this case. This is a beautiful nib large nib it looks good it feels soft it's beautiful and you will see it in action in a few moments. Turning the fountain pen like this we can actually take a quick look at the plastic feeder which is the, the element that feeds that gorgeous nib with ink and uh, this ink delivery system it's stunning. I haven't uh, experienced any starvation anything but juicy wet ink flow and just to top it all up this nib is detachable and it's very easy to remove this nib. In order to clean the fountain pen, grease it or simply just change your nib. So you would take it like this and voila you have the nib out of the fountain pen. It's going to give you tons of practicality towards this fountain pen to actually clean it, grease it, maintain it, do whatever you like with it. Let's check the ergonomics. Here we have this section. The section starts at the thinnest point right here. Then we have this beveled edge. This displays this uh, gold plated trim element on the edge of the section and the section it's quite comfortable. It's 
uh, aesthetic, but also it is very ergonomic. Excuse my fingers because those are inky and uh, right here I have some pinkish ink. So I am man enough to embrace my feminine side and to say that I am using pink inks. Yes, I am. So anyway, let's proceed. Capping grooves right here. Those are not sharp at all. You can hold the fountain pen by those, although I'm not sure how that would translate in a writing experience because I don't hold my fountain pen so high by those threads. Then we have this ink window. I'm not sure if the camera picks it up, but it is uh, semi-transparent. It's a uh, greenish color and it actually allows you to see the level of ink inside. I think that's brilliant. Let's move further and we're going to start right here where this beautiful mother of pearl are going to be uh, starting to show up. This is where the actual barrel of the fountain pen begins. You actually have a smooth step up. Around this point it's going to achieve its maximum diameter and from here it's starting to thin in and uh, right here it's going to be done around where the piston knob is going to begin. The same deal with this beautiful mother of pearl uh, large strips of material. Those capture the light like it's, it's daylight. It's the same feeling if you watch a pearl. This is why it's called mother of pearl. You actually have this beautiful hue, pinkish, greenish, and it's so, so sweet. When you see it in person, it's even better. Uh, right here, opposite to uh, the actual nib, but I'm not sure if it's a line or anything, we have the signature of the artist who actually put together this pan out of 400. Uh, right here, we have two gold plated trim elements just like the cap which displays two gold rings black resin which is used on the piston knob this font pan uh, it's equipped with the piston filling mechanism in my experience one of the softest one of the most easy uh, flowing and gliding piston filling mechanisms are the ones from pelican this piston filling mechanism can be disassembled if you have a tool don't tell anyone it's actually a twisby piston tool and you would insert it like this and uh, you can disassemble and take the piston of the M1000 apart and you can grease the inside, clean it and uh, this is a very very versatile and practical system. Those are the details of the Pelican M1000 White Ray. It's a stunning fountain pen and of course we could talk all day about this fountain pen. I try to keep my videos as short as possible but by the looks of it, I enjoy talking about fountain pens and sometimes my videos are long. So bear with me. Hit the thumbs up and uh, let's proceed with the side-by-side -side size comparison and then the writing sample. But before going there, let me tell you that this fountain pen, when it was introduced in 2021, so two years ago approximately, it had a price tag of 2,700 euros plus or minus. Right now you can find them anywhere above that on the open market in mint condition, use condition, regardless. It's a rare edition and it's going to be selling over the sticker price most of the times. Let's put it side by side. Let me show you how it looks next to other oversized fountain pens. Here we have the Pelican M1000 next to a Visconti Homo Sapiens. Visconti Opera Master, Leonardo Momenta Zero Grande, M1000, Montegrappa 1930 Extra, and Visconti Divina. It's an oversized fountain pen, but it still retains a practical aspect towards its size, weight, and proportions. Now let's have a look uncapped. And since I think the only time that you're going to use your Pelican M1000 is uncapped, this is the sort of a situation that you may found yourself in. We have the Pelican M1000 staying a little bit taller than the Montegrappa 1930 Extra. It's quite similar to a Visconti Divina. It's going to be a little bit shorter than the Leonardo Momento Zero Grande. Also, it's going to be quite similar to an Opera Master and the Homo Sapiens. It's slightly shorter kept like this. The fountain pen measures 145 millimeters unkept like this. It's going to measure 137 millimeters posted. Although I don't recommend you posting the fountain pen, it's going to measure 175 millimeters kept or posted. It's going to weigh 37 
grams and uncapped in writing position like this is going to be weighing 25.5 grams. Those are the overall size proportions and dimensions of the Pelican M1000. I believe it's a practical fountain pen on the oversized side of fountain pens, but yet it is practical, wieldy, quite enjoyable in real life. I mean, you can fit it in most of the pen cases, you can take it with you, it's still practical and it is very, very nice as a writing experience whenever you're gonna use it. Let's get some ink. Let's ink up this fountain pen. Let's let it loose on some Tommy River paper because I cannot wait to share with you all this nib. And we're gonna leave the most of the things to be discussed at the end of the writing uh, sample when I share my personal opinions regarding this fountain pen because I have some good ones and I have some questionable ones. Pen. Pelican. M1000 white ray uh, nib 18C carat gold medium point uh, the ink pelican Edelstein aqua marine paper tomoy river paper 52 gsm now let me tell you that the medium point on this nibs it's very vaguely mentioned because sometimes a medium can write like a fine with pelican sometimes it can write like a double broad triple broad well on mine i would say it's a fat medium close to a broad maybe it's a broad for some of you but for me i consider it to be a little bit of a heavy medium or a fat medium. Now let's check the wetness of this fountain pen, which I do want to say it's 99% fire hose wet. If I would bring the two times a little bit more closer, I would say that it's uh, gonna be uh, quite a, uh, let's just say, wet nib. Figure of eights. And just like I told you, wet, medium, fat, medium, point. Uh, this is not your Japanese medium. Uh, it's quite a broad-ish medium. Flex. These nibs are quite soft. And look at that line variation. I would say that this nib offers both line variation by actually spreading the tines and varying the line that it puts down. And also by the fact that once you spread those tines, enough ink takes uh, down to the paper and actually uh, makes that line thicker. So yeah, it's a soft nib. Be very careful, not push it too hard because once you do that, you can sprain it quite, quite easy. So we have the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Like I told you, it's fairly smooth. It has a hint of a feedback. It's a wet nib. Uh, it is a joy to write with. I would say that when I got this nib, it was still a smooth nib, but not the smoothest one in my collection. Right now, as it is, it's writing beautiful, but it had to be worked on in order to write like this. Let me put everything away and uh, let me share some of my personal opinions, conclusions after getting this fountain pen and having it for the past uh, five or so weeks. Hmm, where to begin? Well, I gather my thoughts, so this is what I have for you. This fountain pen uh, found its own way towards me. Super happy that I was able to welcome one of this M1000 special editions in my collection. It's a fountain pen which I do consider as well pretty and as well practical because I do have a lot of fountain pens that are very, very pretty, but not that practical. The price point, it's a little bit steep. You have to understand that they are only making 400 of these fountain pens. So the price tag, it's a little bit more steep. I know that you can get your M1000 out of resin 
at a fair or less price, a lot more under 1,000 euros. I'm not completely sure how much. You actually pay for the crafts, for the use of material, for Urushi lacquerware techniques, for abalone shell and also mother of pearl and that is what you actually pay for it. What I find to be not that pleasant regarding this fountain pen is actually the nib. When I got this fountain pen I got it uh, with the nib having some very offset slit. The slit in the middle of the nib it's gonna divide a iridium ball in two equal parts. That's the classic case but on this 1000 you actually find out that this tine right here it's considerable smaller than the right tine it actually uh, has an impact on the writing performance and uh, since this is an m1000 pelican white ray which is such a special edition and it costs that much i would say that this fountain pass would need to pass a much more uh, thorough QC and sadly this fountain pen needed a lot of work to actually made the nib to feel a little bit more close to what a nib which has a perfect cut in the middle. Actually this is the only thing regarding this fountain pen which is not that pretty. I can swap it for a different nib and I'm not completely sure that the fountain pen left with such a nib because this is second hand uh, ownership so I don't know maybe uh, this fountain pen was uh, having a lot more owners on the way and someone uh, in this ownership chain uh, changed the nib to this one. I, I don't know. This is what I got and uh, usually with uh, any M1000 this wouldn't be allowed out of QC. Overall right now it's writing beautiful. I worked on a little bit and maybe in the future I would consider to uh, grind this nib in something which is going to correct that uh, slit which is offset. I would have loved to have uh, the, the, the signature right here um, being in alignment with the clip uh, or with the opposite of the clip but it doesn't matter how you put it it's not centered and uh, actually this is my OCD coming so maybe for you this is not a problem. I've enjoyed this fountain pen for the past few days it's quite difficult to find an ink to actually uh, pair it with because it's such a unique color mother of pearl and those uh, sheets of mother of pearl are so beautiful and sometimes I go with blue, sometimes I go with pink, sometimes I go with brown but again this is only my OCD. If you have such a fountain pen use it without getting the cap posted on because you would uh, maintain your Urushi coating on your Pelican M1000 scratch free. This is what I have for you. Let me know if this was useful. If you have the funds, if you want to try this fountain pen, go for it because it's that epic. If you don't have such a large budget and you want to have a Pelican M1000, you have plenty of options in the, the resin uh, side of the Pelican M1000. For sure you're gonna find out an epic fountain pen, oversized yet practical and the nib it's so soft, juicy and bouncy. You're gonna love it no matter uh, what you may think prior to getting it. This is what I have for you. Let me know if you have any questions. Use the comment section down below. Ask me those questions. I'll be more than happy to answer all of your questions. Scroll down if you're looking for an extra writing instrument. There you'll find the details for the Pen Venture website and uh, there you'll find also my details and I'll be more than happy to help you out with your pen purchases. Thank you so much for spending this time with me on the PenVenture YouTube channel. Don't forget to support the growth of the PenVenture YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed, subscribe right now. Just click there, turn the notification bell on and you will be notified whenever we have new content. Speaking about content, if you want to continue watching my videos, I'm gonna leave you this right here. You can click and enjoy. My name is Emi and until next time, take care, stay safe. Bye bye.